Okay. We're live, and they're not actually live, but I'm recording. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, how about Samuel? I think Samuel's got one. Yeah, mine's pretty short because I did it like right after I got home from work, and then I was making dinner and stuff before I hopped on here. Which I guess I could have added to it while I didn't realize we were gonna it was gonna take that long to get started. I could have been working on it, but oh well. Were you good, Woody? I'm good to go. If you're good, go ahead. Okay. I'm not half bad at what I do. Sometimes it pays, sometimes it doesn't. But I'd be lying if I claimed it was just the money that keeps me interested. It's true that when I was stripped of my riches, my status really, it was my pride that was hurt more than anything. And although it seems that the quickest path to retribution would be found in reacquiring lost assets, the idea of burying my enemy is with no more than this pickaxe is quite enticing. I'm not entirely sure I wish to rebuild my fortune anyhow, as I've become rather fond of my life living in squalor. Digging through trash for food, occasionally finding a discarded somnium piece or two. Hell, that's how the old river mystic and I came to find each other. Yep, being a river rat certainly has its perks, and I'm not sure I'm willing to trade that for a ticket to my path. That's all I got. All right, awesome. What was the missed? I missed the line there for a second. The river thing? What, uh, the that's, the, I, that's what I was calling the boat. Oh, okay. Right on. Yeah, I said, that's how the old river mistress and I came to find each other. Mm. Uh, okay. I guess it could be the name like of the boat. I was just referring to the boat. My mistress. <laughs> that too. Anyone else? I got one. Alright. <clears throat> I'm not half bad at what I do. Sometimes it pays, sometimes it doesn't. But I'd be lying if I claimed it was just the money that keeps me interested. The research and development is essential. Although when it goes wrong, I prefer the memory to be hazy. Or in the case of that home surgery anesthetic non-existent. <laughs> Today isn't going to get out of hand like that. I'm almost to the city of Bridges, and I have some serious errands to run. I'm way too busy to be distracted. Supplies. That's why I'm coming into the city. There in the lower districts, I can get hold of some ingredients I've only ever heard of. Some with powerful curative properties, and some that look and smell provocative enough to sell based on those characteristics alone. I'm gonna make a shitload totally worth spending my last 16 gold. Busy as a bee on speed, that's going to be me today. Supplies, dinner at the drawbridge, then the west side for whoring and drinking. <laughs> Gotta make some contacts in the city, too. Oh, god damn it. I can feel a familiar feeling behind my eyes. This is going to be a tough to-do list, considering I'm probably 20 minutes from blacking out. My eyelids are getting heavy, but there it is, the city of Idges. Sibi of Ishes. Sibity Badishes. Okay, I'm back and somewhere in the lower ward by the looks of it. I have a burlap sack and what looks like some sort of root. I don't know what the fuck. There's also vomit, probably mine. I'm ducking into a shop now. Homewares. Great. I gotta get a new tea cozy. Immediately as I step in, I see a pitifully frightened looking human, old as hell. Humans, she's probably 40 or something. They age fast. Maybe not fast enough, stupid bitch. I'm not the freak, stop looking at me like that. I pull my hair and adjust my hat. I sense another presence in the shop and immediately grab another shop attendant as he turns the corner from an aisle and I shout something in his face, loud. Shit, I think I better leave. I'm acting a little freakish, maybe. I'm back outside and I ditch the barf bag and that fucking root ball. I check my reflection in the stained glass being sold by a street vendor. I make all of this by hand. It's soldered with somnit. Shut up, I snap and start walking past. <laughs> Just keep cool. 
the drawbridge, I think, as I feel a second wave begin to roll out like a carpet. Red carpet, everything going red, facing west. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> um, do you have anything, Caitlin? I do. All right. Let us have it. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm not half bad at what I do. Sometimes it pays, sometimes it doesn't. But I'd be lying if I claimed that it was just the money that kept me interested. Normally, I like the sport of it, moving through the crowds, finding the perfect mark, and grabbing their coins for a pouch before anyone is the wiser. When I was a little girl, I used to daydream that I was playing a board game against the world. I would pretend that I could see each person's movements projected as strings of light in front of them. The woman with the crying child is going to bend down and pick it up. The man whose hat blew away in the wind is going to chase after it. I would shift through the imaginary vectors, avoiding collisions, staying unnoticed, and of course, grabbing anything of value within arm's reach. Today, though, I don't feel like playing that game. Today, I'm just exhausted. Well, exhausted and broke. There's a man on the corner in worse shape than me, crying out his destitution like an auctioneer waiting desperately on a bid. It's nice to think that I would give him something if I had anything myself, but I know I wouldn't. I should get some booze, maybe, a bit of nasty even. I don't really mess with this stuff, but on days like the edge off, you know. First things first, I need some somnium. I move to the opposite side of the crowd, away from the beggar. Beggars make people uncomfortable. Discomfort makes people wary. Wary makes people, well, you get it. To my right, a woman with pale blue loafers looks down at the dirt path in the town square with disgust. Perfect. The shoes are too fashionable to be worn out of convenience, and her surprise at the lack of pavement marks her as an outsider. One plus one equals an easy target. Thief, I yell, as in as feminine as a voice as I can muster. Hidden in the crowd, I watch as her hand taps just above her right breast, anxious to ensure her coin purse is still there. You can see her relief. Some poor soul might have been robbed, but not her. No. I intercept her walking the opposite direction. No vectors of imaginary light, just a hard need for something other than hunger and exhaustion. As I bump into her, I reach my hand into her pocket and quickly remove the pouch. If I was in a better mood, I might have apologized for knocking into her. If I was in my Steve costume, I might even have risked a wink. Today, though, I just needed her money. And yes, now that I think about it, definitely some nasty. Nice. That's it. Oh, I really enjoy these. It gives me a lot of ideas. It's it's good. It's good juju. Okay. Um, well, I'll pop over here. Um, where we left our characters, they were descending um, a elevator, going down, down, and the time more time they spent in this chamber, the more time it felt like, uh, the more eerie it starts to feel, unlike they're going down uncannily far. And finally the elevator comes to rest and um, they are in a, a very dark space. And there's a, uh, yeah, cool clammy, uh, clammy feeling. So let me switch cam here carefully. And I'll just say, okay, yeah, so you are now at the bottom of the elevator shaft, and um, it's dark. It's, it's very dark. Does anyone have means by which to see? Uh, I have a pretty sure Stephanie mission. was still carrying that candle. Yeah, I was going to say, I still have a candle. All right, you've got the, the remains of one candle sputtering bravely towards the end of its uh, wick there. Anyone else? Love? I have dark vision. Dark vision? Dark vision. Okay. So you can see all right in here. Um, yeah, I can see. I can see uh, sixty feet as far as like, um, it, like darkness is dim is like basically dim light to me. So. Okay. Well, I'm gonna toss a minute on the clock here, and you guys have a little role play time as the doors open up here. Boom. 
I don't know what we're getting into here. Down here. Cool and clammy, just uh, just all sorts of new feelings. <laughs> Didn't someone have Where a torch? Um, I've got a lamp, um, and I'm gonna pull out a lamp, uh, my like little uh, bug lamp from my pack. Okay. Um, and uh, yo, hey Stephanie, pass that this way. Um, we'll keep the we'll keep the candle going with some oil. I pass in the candle. Cool. I'm gonna total, I'm gonna light up my uh, my bug lamp. Okay, you light your lamp, and as it beams into the darkness. You see a narrow stone corridor that slopes uh, gently down into uh, God knows what. Goes even further, huh? Well, mm, team, uh, what do we think? Well, uh, seeing as how the Baron was trying to keep it a secret, there must be something worthwhile down here. Uh, otherwise, wouldn't make it so hard to get to. I say we, we find out where the tunnel leads. What does your shaker's paw say? Good question. Um, I'll take out the shaker's paw and see. Uh... I think the shaker's paw is going to, uh, as you pull it out, it comes to life and it grasps uh, greedily towards Stephanie. I believe she has the most somnium in the party. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think a certain someone's throwing off the uh, the shaker paw here. Well, I've got a I've got the lamp. I'm, um, suppose we could uh, go down and check it out. Why not? Okay. Uh, so uh, you're kind of in this stone chamber where things uh, where the elevator landed, and there's a like a a stone tunnel kind of ahead of you, and it goes downward. You know. This, uh, this is obviously maybe uh, the wine cellar, so uh, I, I feel if we go down this way, we'll probably just find some fine wines. Um, a nice uh, way to kick our feet up and relax after such a hard day. The These places are built for cellars like this. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's establish a marching order here. I'd say uh, one of you two with the low light vision should be up front. Um, hey, uh, Fergus, how good's your hit points right now? 10. I I'm 10. at six. Um, All right. Do you, yeah. mind if I, I, do you mind if I just hang out behind you? Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'll be second then. Yeah, I'll lead the way down there. What type of weapon do you have? Uh, I have a rapier, and then I also have the beaten end of this wand. Um, do you want to hold the lamp then, and then, um, and then I can have my bow ready um, to like help um, take things at a distance from behind you. Okay. Um, um, well, or would it be better the, if someone who can't the lamp see so and, well? Uh, what's up? Maybe it'd be better if someone who can't see as well holds the lamp. Sure. Yeah, I'll pass the lamp back to whoever's behind me, I guess. Behind I'll me. take it. Okay, Stephanie comes in behind you holding the lamp ahead. She's kind of rolling her eyes. She's like, okay, how many times are we going to pass this light back and forth? <laughs> many times is necessary. Yeah, dude, light it up. <laughs> pass it around. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't Langa that said that. That was me. I'll be in the back. And Jerry brings up the rear. Okay. So do you march forth into the tunnels? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping for some, uh, for a cask of good wine. And I'm just going to go down the line, everyone, a quick sentence describing like them and like what they're holding, you know, if they're holding a weapon. And just okay. like pass it to the next person, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, so I've got my, my rapier out um and i have the hand crossbow and uh my what is it calvarian wand or colvarian wand colvarian wand you're holding all three of them well the colvarian wand's in my belt okay 
All right, I've got a city skinner, my knife in one hand, and then the lamp in the other. Okay. Um, I've got an arrow ready, um, and um, I'm holding my bow. I've got uh, my my pickaxe in hand. I'm kind of using it to uh, help me detect any sort of uneven ground as we march, but uh, keeping the other hand free to uh, so I can use it two-handed if if need be. All right, so. You step off and towards the uh, entrance to the tunnel, you walk for a few uneventful paces and all of a sudden as you, uh, as you step into this new section of tunnel, you hear a creak behind you and you hear the spinning of gears as the uh, elevator platform begins to ascend. Oh snap. Well, there better be good wine down here. There better be a lot of wine. It whisks off into the distance, up going up, chun chun, as uh, little peams of dust uh, kind of fall down with its departure. And um, if you march forward, you you go for a ways, kind of slowly going down this tunnel. And um, the deeper you get, uh, you know, it's a significant distance. You're you're walking for a while, say 15 minutes. Eventually, you can't see the um, you can't even see the you know the entrance to the uh, to this descending tunnel, um, but after a time, you uh, come basically to the end that kind of levels off, and ahead of you um, there is a very large stone, very large, very old looking stone door, um, like a two two door you know gate, and then uh, surrounded there's kind of just it opens up into there's a wall you know. So you, there's basically a large stone door and a uh, and a stone wall at the end of this uh, at the end of this tunnel. So this is our representation of that. And uh, this, the negative space here is uh, got you know there's a stone wall going out from either you know either doorway here, either door. So we're at a we're at a seemingly I can't hear you. Man. Crossroads, man. Are we are we at a dead end? Yeah, you've come to a dead end down here, and the the room opens up a bit. Um, you know, it's the you know size of like a it's it's a good size room that you're in now. It's opened up into. And this room is basically consumed by this door in the front, in you know, toward the front. All right, uh, I'm gonna approach the uh, door and take a closer look. I want to make a like perception check. Uh, yeah. So a perception check focused on the door here. It's like anything. <laughs> I missed that. What, what did you say? I got a two dose. You notice uh, nothing remarkable about the door. Um, about the taste of the door? Yeah. You kind of like shake out. You're like, oh, okay, door, focus time. You kind of like basically work the next in there. All right. <laughs> um, right behind you, there's room, and uh, Stephanie steps forward here. All right. Same thing. I want to try to... Uh examine the door maybe with a different sense than taste. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, and then rolling. Oh, I got a five. Uh, you're also kind of dumbfounded by this door. Um, it's way bigger than it seems like it needs to be. Like, you've gone down like this um, kind of mine shaft tunnel kind of thing. And as you've gotten to the bottom, this uh, old stone construction doesn't really seem to match the same kind of, you know, your, your thoughts are maybe not this sophisticated. It's just like, oh, this looks different. That's basically what you've come to conclusion of. Okay. And uh, let's let's try another one here. Let's uh, bring it up. We've got Langdon. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, looks like the we've reached the wine cellar. Langdon's uh, convinced that there's wine <laughs> down here. Oh, I'm positive of it. These houses, uh, 
these types of manors are usually stock full of wine, usually centuries. Wait, anyway, hold on. I know this is what you're currently doing, but go ahead and mansplain to everyone what's going on right now. You've got a minute. <laughs> Here we are, the old wine cellar. Um, you see, these types of uh, manors are always built are built on top of each other, and there's always one wine cellar that has existed usually for thousands of years. Um, and inside is the best wine you've ever had. And so all we have to do is get past this door. Uh, they just require some sort of a wine sacrifice. So uh, if uh, and I'm going to pull out one of the bottles of um, of um, what's it called? Uh, I've got a bottle of some of Dr. Um, <laughs> Dr. Cumberbund's um, fake elixir, which I believe is real. <laughs> this stuff, uh, this stuff uh, seemed to be uh, pretty, pretty good, and uh, I'd say it would make a fine assortment. I'm gonna just smash the bottle against the um, the door and go, ta-da! Okay, <laughs> you smash the bottle against these doors, and it with a kind of a high cracking sound and it kind of echoes chick, 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 chick. up through the tunnel uh the the liquid like kind of runs down the door and starts to puddle into a pool in front of the doors well shit okay. <laughs> Mary, i'd like Mary to say nice uh, try but that's a huge waste <laughs> That's all I got. I'm gonna go step down from my mantle. <laughs> so fuck. Uh, Langdon kind of sh like looks around and kind of sh shrugs off and pretends like he's focusing on something else here. <laughs> I'm gonna start flipping through my uh, through my notes. <laughs> what do you think, Jerry? Okay, so um, yeah, my my internet connection was like glitching out. We're we're at an impasse here. It's just a door. Yeah, big stone. There's an open room now with stone walls and two big stone doors. Okay, there's no tunnels leading off to the side or anything. There is not. Did you hear me? I still got you guys. Yeah, yeah. you still got us. Yeah. There, there are no tunnels. My internet, I think, is a little bit spotty tonight. Is there any writing or anything on the door? Uh, you can make a search check. Okay, I'm going to search check the door. Uh, I got a 20. Um, so this door is huge. Like it's made out of two huge um, single pieces of carved uh, what might be granite some very dense uh, stone, it's very smooth. So um, it uh, shows surprising, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to tell how old it is because of uh, the material. Um, you don't find any markings on the door. You're speculating that the door is swing inward, um, but uh, you do find some scratches. Uh, looks like uh, where someone might have pried or prodded with tools and attempted to uh, pry open this door at some point. Hmm. Well, um, as best as I can tell, it's my uh, extensive mechanical knowledge. Uh, it appears these doors go inward. So why don't we first try just to uh, use our human strengths to push? You guys with me? Let's push. Okay. Let's do it. Two, two of us on each door. Okay. So I'm not going to position the miniatures, but you both, uh, you all position yourselves uh, onto the door there. Okay. So uh, do you want us to roll like a strength check or what? Yeah, let's have, um, let's have everyone roll a strength check and just uh, go ahead and announce for me what you get there. 18. I got a 19. 17. I got an 8, so apparently I just decided not to help. <laughs> okay, you all prepare yourselves, and on Jerry's count, you push against the door, 
and you strain and you, you know, your feet scrape against the ground, you, you rebrace yourselves and you prepare to push again and you expend a mighty effort and the doors, uh, you know, they might as well be a mountain there. They, they don't budge at all. Hmm. Well, if Braun wouldn't cut it, maybe, um, maybe a little bit of uh, force wood. Um, give me a couple of them somnium pieces, Stephanie. We can blow it open. All right. I reluctantly hand them over, and only two. All right. Cool. So she gives you two somnium pieces. Um, is this a good idea? Um, putting together some somnium and um, trying to blast it open. I think so. I mean that that would be that would be the next thing I'd try. Yeah. Um, I believe that Jerry does have a uh, a relevant uh, ability in this situation. But. It was something I was just saying in case you forgot from last time or didn't write it down because you have a basically the ability to like link a somnium explosion to another somnium explosion. Uh, right, you were talking about that last time, but I didn't have my character sheet, so I didn't have it written down. What? So what? Can you explain that again, Woody? Yeah. So you have regularly the ability to throw somnium grenades, and with with this other kind of upgraded ability you have, you can link two pieces together. So that, like, when you detonate the one, the other one explodes. Okay. Sequentially or simultaneously? Simultaneously. Hmm. So we should put, um, like, two pieces of somnium, one at the top of the door and one near the bottom. Be a good idea, I think, to wedge in where someone's been yeah. crying at the door. Yeah. Wedge one in there. Might be a good yeah. spot. Well, seeing as how I know how to detonate these simultaneously, I think yeah, um, spreading them yeah, spreading them out makes a lot of sense. Um, my only concern is if two somnium pieces aren't enough to blow it, um, we don't want to expend the two and then be left with less overall. Mm -hmm. uh, so that being said, I don't know that we necessarily want to waste. Somnium either. We want to do like a big bang. We can do like uh, four. Mm. How much somnium mm. do you have? Mm. Yeah, how much somnium do you have, Stephanie? Uh, like three pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't can't prove otherwise. Um, I've got three. I don't necessarily want to go spinning all of them, but I've got three. Mm. So, well, that leaves us with six total here. We could try two, and if it fails, we could try four. Or oh, no, we could... I have, I, sorry, I have two of Stephanie's, so I guess I have five total on my end. Okay. Uh, well, Cumberbund, how many do you have? have more than right? one. Uh, just the one? Yeah. Jerry, how many do you got? I don't have any. Okay, so I guess you've been searching this whole time. No somnium coming about. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll uh, I'll take two of Stephanie's and I'll put um, I'll put one of my own in. So we have three in the door and give one to Jerry to like use as the detonator. I guess is that how it works? Uh, yeah, but if he if he he'll have to throw it to detonate it. Right. Right. Or else it'll just blow his hand off. You know. For sure. <laughs> I guess, um, okay, so what we'll do, we'll put one at, tuck one at the top of the door in the crack and one at the bottom, and then I will throw the detonator piece from a reasonable distance at one of them to have them both blow up. So, okay, so are you guys, where are you, where are you all going to stand? I'm going to way back up. Stephanie is convinced that putting it at the top of the door is going to make the roof cave in. Yeah, yeah. maybe about, I maybe about go 40 feet back. Okay. Um, does, uh, does anyone have any liquor on them? 
Uh, I uh, just smashed all my liquor against the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. And by the way, you see that now the uh, liquid is kind of, uh, you know, running. There's a little rivulet running, uh, running off, you know, from the little pool of uh, liquid. Where is it running, running through the door? Uh, no, it's just like running off to the side. Oh, really? Like behind the door or just like? No, like it's like slowly trickling towards the wall. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. Where are you going to be, uh, Cumberland? Uh, I'm going to go back to where Langdon is. Okay. Does, uh, does anyone have a shield? Stephanie has a buckler. Uh, yeah, I have, I have a buckler. Okay, let me borrow that because I'll, I'll stand a little closer, but I'll try and use that to shield my face or something in case. Uh, All right, totally. Yeah. Hand it over. All right, uh, so you've got two pieces of Somnium up top, two pieces down below. I think we had one up top, one below, and then I'm going to throw one at the oh, okay. one below. Okay, one up top, one below. Mm. We, um, okay, cool. That makes sense to me. Okay, uh, I guess, I don't know, what, Woody, would it be safe to assume I know kind of uh, what the blast radius would be on this? Uh, you haven't ever had the luxury of expending this much Somnium in the form of an explosion before, um, but uh, you think it could be pretty big. You think you want to be, you think you're a good distance back, but uh, you might want to be, you know, kind of at the mouth of this room at least when you toss it in there and you might want to, you know, run for cover basically. Okay. Well, um, is every, like, the way the room is, is everyone else kind of like, uh, wasn't the opening bigger that we came down in? Um, no, it was like a narrow, like mine shaft kind of tunnel leading down and then it opened up into this room. So they're up in the okay. tunnel basically. Okay. Well, I guess I'm just going to chuck the Somnium and then I'll, I'll turn tail and try and head back away from the explosion. Okay, so you hold the uh, piece of Somnium out in your hand and uh, using a little bit of focus, all of a sudden it starts to whoop, shine really red. And as you toss it through the air, it kind of fizzles like a sparkler and creates this like red streak through the air. It, it goes into the chamber and boom, there's a huge explosion and red light uh, kind of cast backward. And uh, then it slowly settles and um, there's kind of a, a red haze that slowly dissipates. And when it's uh, finished, you see the door there. Uh, it looks unchanged. OK, so that was after the explosion? That was after the explosion. Hmm. Well, hmm. I'm not sure what to do other than, uh, I mean, can we? Maybe investigate where that liquid was trickling down to. Uh, sure. So you uh, you go down here and uh, you see uh, as you get down that the kind of floor and the dust and dirt around the door has kind of been blasted, and so that the little puddle has been kind of splattered, and the the liquid's kind of absorbed into the dust there. So it was starting to run towards the uh, wall to the right here. Okay, but we we did clearly observe where it was running to before. Yeah, but it's no longer, you know, the puddle's kind of been blasted. Well, I could go uh, pour out another one of these bottles. They're obviously not good for nothing. Uh, or they're obviously not good for opening doors, but... <laughs> and there's a better one behind it, so... Um... <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> So let's just go ahead and uh, if we think that uh, this whole like piss drain is a way to go, um, I'll pour out another bottle. I mean, you could even take a piss, uh, but I didn't suggest that because I'm not I'm not breaking the rules here. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a bottle full of piss already, so I'll just go ahead and pour it out. That's a uh, harsh burn on Dr. Cumberland. 
Okay, so pour out, this bottle. Bottle. Do pour out this bottle where the previous one got uh, obliterated and uh, it kind of soaks into the, to the dust for a moment and then it starts to kind of puddle and then it starts to slowly, you know, find its way as water does. And um, it starts to move towards uh, the wall to the right. And uh, yeah, anybody who's watching this process can take a, make a perception check. Cool. All right. Oh, I lost my D20. Hold on. Oh, I found it. I got a four. 18. Seven. 13. Uh, okay. Well, anybody who got a reasonably high roll, like anywhere over a 10, um, they can witness uh, as they see where the kind of the water is headed, they, uh, they look at the wall and upon inspecting the wall, they find, um, that they see a little, uh, white mark scratched into the wall. Um, cool. And, uh, here just a second. Come on, damn it. Come on. Okay. The mark looks something like this. Mm. 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 And uh, um, I'm going to give Langdon a uh, a check, a kind of a history or like you know knowledge of the realms check, and really anybody who sees it, I guess, if you think your character would have that knowledge, um, which probably would be everybody, uh, go ahead and uh, make that make that roll. Got twelve. I've got Eighteen. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Is there a sparkly water open somewhere, babe? I'm so blinded from the and I didn't even perceive it. Okay, um, what was your check, Stephanie? 18. Okay, uh, I feel like Stephanie is most likely to uh, make this connection. Um, you see this little scratch on the wall, it's a... Uh, it's a square kind of shape with a little lightning bolt or a little thing down the, like a fissure down the middle. And uh, you have a flash of recognition. And um, you remember uh, from your time, I think you'd written a little bit about being in the city of Bridges. Is that right? Yep. You remember from your time kind of as a street urchin in the city of Bridges, um, there were whispers of a uh, sort of a secret organization of uh, assassins and thieves and uh, basically, um, what would be a good word for it, uh, revolutionaries maybe. Um, and uh, you don't even remember, you know, hearing what they were called. It was kind of this hush-hush thing. But you remember that uh, there was a phrase that was associated with them that kind of was their organization's credo. And the phrase is, uh, there's a crack in every wall. All right. And as you kind of see, like there is, appears to be like a little crack uh, running down where the water is headed towards here. And someone's, someone's made a mark to indicate that basically. Guys, I think I know what this is. I remember hearing somewhere about this organization and they, they have this saying that there's a crack in every wall. I think that's what this is here. What the organization do? <laughs> I don't know. Secret thing. That's not the point. What was their name? <laughs> the secret organization of revolutionary Kraken Wall. Oh, the the, the sword cross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't good. think that Langman actually knows what he's talking about in this instance? <laughs> Yes, yes, of course. Langdon always, Langdon always knows what he's talking about, but it doesn't always have to be. <laughs> I think we should take another piece of Somnium and try it in this crack here. Well, I'm always up for detonating more Somnium. Um, well, you've got the most at, at this point, I think. Dr. Cumberland, All I'm, right. I'm going to say that uh, Dr. Cumberland is kind of appalled by this, uh, you know, 
This is a this is a lot of money to be tossing around like this. He didn't didn't work last time. I think you're probably a little nervous about this plan. Yeah, I mean, we didn't even make a dent in it before, and there's already kind of cracks and marks where someone was trying to open it before. Let's I don't see uh, why. What if we just? I want to have somebody like inspect the. Uh, you, you you've seen you now seen the mark, but that doesn't mean anybody's like gone up and checked it out, you know. Yeah, I'll go up and check and just it out. In case everybody thought that, that that they had done that, I just want to make that clear. Okay, I'll take a closer look at it. I scoff because I'm so sure I'm right. Um, so as you get really up close to the wall section here, you know it's this uh, old masonry, and there's a little <laughs> mark, and um, you see that below the mark there sort of appears to be like a weak kind of weak spots in the bricks, and as it goes down, you can actually see there is kind of a hairline fracture going down into the uh, kind of clay dirt of the uh, floor. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to try and dig dig at the floor there with my foot, kind of kick up, see if I can kick up the dirt. All right. Uh, make a little check there. Make some kind of little dexterity check, maybe. All right. Oh, 19. Okay, uh, so you definitely you kick your foot down 22. into... Uh, into soft clay and you scoop out a big wad and you flick it and it splatters uh, on the door there with like a big, big poop streak. And uh, there's a little, you've got, you've taken a little divot out uh, down at the bottom there and you can see that uh, the crack starts to extend as it gets, uh, gets lower. Or it starts to widen, I mean, that's what I meant. Okay. Hey, check this out. I see what's going on and I'm going to, uh say uh step aside let let me do it uh let me use this for what it's for and i'm gonna take my pickaxe to it all right so jerry uh raises his pickaxe and he starts going to work uh jerry go ahead and uh, give us a just like an attack roll of this okay i got a 16. All right, so in a fury of swings and uh, s every once in a while kicking up sparks, Jerry starts going to town, uh, scooping out this hole, making it wider. And uh, before long, he's uh, kind of chinking off uh, chunks of stone. And, uh, and after a little while, there's a little pit kind of leading down and it opens up and there's kind of, there's almost space enough for somebody to squeeze through. Oh, who's the smallest? Um, Probably me. I think I'm like a. Oh wait, no, I'm not an elf. Do I have? Uh, do I still have? Uh, I can't remember if I still have uh, the little guy, the mouse guy. Uh, you uh, you search around in your things, and uh, you didn't think that he was with you, but uh, you find that someone has stowed away into your belongings, <laughs> none other than uh, Chimerius Hergum the Fifth. Oh, there you are. Oh, squeak. <laughs> squeak. I'm pulling that. I couldn't let you go alone. My my, my family wanted to forsake you. But I, I feel that our, our paths crossed for a reason. You're right. Have you ever been down here before? Oh, we never travel so deep. There are, there are strange, dark things down here. It would take... It would take Ah, why days and and maybe even years for us to come down this far? Oh, I'm you're lucky that you have. have us. All right, there's a little crack in the wall here. We want you to go over there and check out what's on the other side. I'm okay. Okay, fine. So he jumps down and he uh, moves towards the crack. He darts in for a minute and then he darts back out. What was in there? What'd you see? It opens up into a tunnel. And a stream, and I'm afraid I can't swim. Uh, uh, don't worry about that. Is there any way to open the door on the other side? I don't see a door on the other side. Hmm. Just a tunnel and water running. All right, back into my pack. He runs up and uh, takes his place at uh, your hat, and he's holding on to the brim of your hat there. I'm going right. to try and make so it. He, uh, perhaps the door is a decoy if, uh, if it opens up into a new tunnel below. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'll help. I'll, I'll kind of assist Jerry in just digging out that hole bigger. Okay, so if you guys get down there, you can uh, widen the hole, and it's uh, big enough where someone on all fours can uh, move through it easily. Cool. I'm, I'm going to go through. Okay, so uh, you go through and you uh, get up on the other side. If someone shines a little bit of light through there, you can see that you've now opened into this uh, – not terribly wide tunnel, but um, big enough that you can kind of stand if you're kind of crouched down and there's uh, about like shin deep cold water uh, rushing through this tunnel. And uh, if you look uh, off to your right, um, the tunnel kind of closes uh, after a while into rubble and kind of becomes impassable. But uh, to your left, it rushes down uh, kind of at a low, like a slow uh, slope into darkness. Mm. What do you see down there, uh, Cumberbund? Well, there's a there's a stream. Looks like drainage or something underneath here. Uh, one look one side looks too deep to pass, but if we go the other direction, it looks pretty passable. Well, okay. we gotta go somewhere. Something, way. You can't go back something up. brushes uh, against your. Uh, you feel something sl like kind of slither and brush against your uh, your leg there, Cumberbund. Hold up. Something just touched my leg. And uh, if you, as you look down, there's a, uh, a what appears to be a human turd kind of floating past your leg there. Oh, it's just <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It makes uh, its yeah. way on down. Okay, we're in the sewer. I've figured that much out. Wait, was this like a secret society of plumbers? Is that what they were? There's a crack before every hole. Is that what they're saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go follow him over to the other side with the lamp. Okay. Wait, I have the lamp. It's my lamp. I'm taking it back. Yeah, you just stole it from me. All right, but fine. I follow after you the lamp. The, you have that little candle. No, there's no candle anymore. Yeah, I have the lamp. Yeah, it was my lamp the whole time though. Just because you, uh, just because it's your the 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 your fire that started it. Whatever, I'm following after Langdon, who now has the lamp for me. Apparently. <laughs> as soon as I get to the other side, I give Stephanie the lamp. Okay, so uh, <laughs> you move into this low tunnel and. Uh, there's uh, cold water obviously running through here with the occasional uh, solidified uh, turd kind of floating by. Um, it doesn't really smell like bad in the, in the tunnel, but it looks like a, it looks like a naturally formed tunnel. Um, and um, yeah, do you just continue down the tunnel, follow the water? Yeah. Yeah, there's no other way to go, I guess. All right. Uh, uh, you. Can I actually? I want to inspect the other side of where the wall, like where the the uh, the what we thought was the door would have been. Sure. So uh, when you inspect it, you find all this rubble. Basically, it's kind of uh, the birthplace of this tunnel, and there is a smaller kind of uh, looks like some old like busted pipe kind of sticking out near the bottom, and occasionally a little bit of you know a little bit of something flushed up from somewhere far above will pop out, you know. Yeah, I don't literally mean flush, but it looks like maybe this is an old uh, sewer tunnel opening up into a deeper uh, situation. Uh, with uh, with my knowledge of like the Veltlands um, and like how common is is plumbing? Um, this is uh, not definitely not common. Like only the oldest of you know kind of established structures would have the sophistication to have plumbing. Um, the fact that this uh, elevator shaft goes down here in general is pretty strange, though not unheard of that uh, they might have sunk shafts to search for uh, somnium deposits or uh, yeah, and that kind of thing. Um, it's your suspicion, though, that uh, part of this, uh, well, it's your suspicion, for one, that uh, no one's been here in a very long time, and maybe never at all. But this little uh, plumbing terminal, um, yeah, inconclusive. You're not sure. It's 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 uh, strange, but uh, not particularly remarkable. Uh, looks like we've got ourselves a Goonies situation. 
I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Can I examine the like rubble wall? I'm not. I'm not convinced we should follow the shit. Uh, yeah, it's like it's a bunch of like you know large boulders and rocks as this kind of you know it's the. I mean, it's kind of the birthplace of this tunnel, basically, and it looks like there's just kind of, you know, it becomes more cracks, you know, that are feeding into this uh, little stream, this little underground stream. But it's definitely impassable. All right. All right, let's follow the shit. Let's follow the shit. All right, uh, just out of curiosity, where are you guys at uh, hit point wise, et cetera? I've only got six. I got ten. I forget what I was at. I wrote it down um, last time, but I think I was around the same as Cumberbun because we got, we got healed by something. I, don't, I think we you split, split a potion. potion. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm that, at 26 because I'm a badass bitch and basically didn't fight very much. Yeah. Okay, so and most of the fight hit me in the back. You all moved for a while <laughs> through the tunnel, and um, and the water is cold, and you're wet, and it's dark, and frankly unpleasant. And uh, it's a uh, tough being down here in the tunnel. It's not a fun feeling, especially maybe for any of you who are afraid of tight spaces. Um, the cold starts to really seep into your legs and the oppressive tightness of it all and the uncanny uh, knowledge that you're so deep and so removed and uh, it's such an alien environment starts to fuck with you a little bit. So I want everybody to make a will save and a constitution save. You got to be a 13 on both these saves or else there's going to be a negative consequence. God damn it. I rolled a three for both. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, I got a 10. I have passed both, but do you, I got a 14 and an 18. Okay, so. What, why was I supposed to roll twice? I didn't catch that. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I thought we were rolling twice. Is there not two modifiers? Well, yeah, either way, well, I, I would say roll twice. I mean, I guess it's kind of arbitrary, but yeah, I would say roll twice. Roll twice? Because uh, it was a one will three. save and a constitution save. Correct. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I got a five this time. Okay, so who failed their constitution save? Yo. Yo. All right, so you're not used to uh, this kind of demand on your body and the cold and the like, you know, all this stuff. It uh, sinks in and before long your feet start to get numb. And um, you're all going to, uh, you know, for the near future, you're all going to have movement from all these. Um, and who saved, uh, Stephanie's fine. She's, uh, she's a tough bird and, uh, you know, she's, she seems fine. And Jerry, did you fail the constitution save? No, I, I made, I got a 14 and a 22, okay. 22 on the constitution. Who sailed, who failed the will save? Yo, wait, Woody, what's the, so what is the movement penalty? Is it like 10 feet or? Well, we use a grid in the system, but basically instead of being able to move like close near far, you're only going to be able to move near for the rest of this encounter effectively. Okay, gotcha. Like until you sleep it off, basically. Okay. Um, and who failed the will save? Oh, I did. Are you the only one? Yes, sir. Me. I did too. Okay, so uh, Langdon and Dr. Cumberbund are deeply shaken and disturbed by their uh, deep, like, kind of moving into this underground realm. Um, you're both going to uh, basically, for a little while here at my discretion, uh, take disadvantage on uh, just, you know, a little while here, you're going to take disadvantage on any rolls you make, effectively. All right. Because you're, like, freaked out, basically. You're trying to hold your shit together, and you're not doing a very good job. Um, so you move downstream for a while. Eventually, um, it comes to a terminus, and there's kind of a plunging waterfall, and uh, a little walkway goes off to the side, and uh, this waterfall just plunges down into darkness. You don't see how far it goes, but there's a little uh, set of uh, carved stairs um, carved out of the, like, 
just rough hewn out of the stone that uh, start to lead down uh, kind of the side of this uh, chasm. And uh, if I don't need to remind you, you're disturbingly deep into the earth. And uh, we're top of the order here, so I believe that will. Uh, who is it leading the way, Dr. Cumberland? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Cumberland, at the, at the mouth of this thing, uh, you feel a, a sudden relief as a, a warm sensation trickles down your legs. And uh, you realize that you've urinated yourself and uh, urine fills your pants and your boots, uh, providing, honestly, a very nice warm relief from the bitter cold that, that's like in your bones. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're terrified. You don't want to move forward right now. I don't know. We're getting further and further down. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, how deep does this shit go? I mean, it's like there's a waterfall and are we just going to keep going further down till we never get back up? Well, clearly the path has been, uh, been made to be fallen. There's stairs off to the side there and there's no way for us to travel backwards. So this is really our only choice. I'm gonna, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't be in the front. This is freaking me out. Yeah, what if we go back? What if we go all the way back to where the elevator was and call for help? Yeah, maybe was, yeah. Uh, maybe those little rat men could uh, help us out? I take yeah. it all back what I said about them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like the of that. I'm gonna slap Langdon across the face and I'm gonna get a hold of yourself, coward. All right, make a uh, make an attack roll and add your charisma modifier. <laughs> a charismatic attack. <laughs> got a, uh, I got an eighteen. All right, I'm assuming you're going for subdual damage. You 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 do a really theatrical, you know, like snap out of it, man, like slap across uh, Langdon, and um, and uh, I'm going to say that you effectively uh, cure his uh, fear, so he's going to no longer have his disadvantage. So Langdon, you get your you get your stones back. No, you're right. I, I fucking hate those rat guys. Um, <laughs> let's keep going further down here. Um, uh, Jerry's right. This place was built for uh, for someone to trade. And at the end, there's got to be wine. There always has been wine in this pathway. Let's go. All right. So Langdon takes point. Uh, who's behind him? Um, I am. Stephanie, I, you go behind it. And then uh, Cumberbund, if it'll put, you, put your mind at ease, I've still got that 50 feet of rope. Uh, why don't you tie off to me and follow me down? Okay. All right. That's fine. I'll do it. I'll tie right, that, uh, I'll tie I'm going to say with that, uh, with that gesture, uh, you're also cured of your... Uh, of your uh, disadvantage, your fear lifts here, Cumberland. Oh yeah, this feels good. It's good, nice to be tied to something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even if we're just tied to the power of friendship. And uh, here we go. Uh, our gang descends these stairs, and as they go down, uh, they. They in, they move into uh, what now is not a natural but clearly a uh, a crafted tunnel, and um, the stairs here end in uh, again kind of pooled water, and uh, they lead into this kind of stone uh, stone stone passageway here. Um. Can I uh, look at the walls to see, like, to see if I recognize, like, if there's any, like, uh, other markings since they're all hewn now? Yes. Uh, so you look at these, um, these stones and these walls, and they, uh, you know, you don't necessarily know a lot about masonry work, but they seem very large. Like, they see you're, you're almost kind of incredulous and kind of amazed by the size. I mean, you might see basically like each stone in this wall is, is like the size of a car at first you don't even notice that it's made out of you know individual bricks but they're like they're big size of a wagon maybe i should have said but you know what i'm saying no i'm saying yeah 
shit, whoever built this must have been massive or had a lot of friends. Or a lot of slaves. What do you see? Well, what lies ahead? <laughs> We're not sure yet. You just you just keep your head down, all right? It's not safe. <laughs> you see Trimerius uh, bravely holding forth his uh, like his fork that he's sharpened the ends of, and he has little leather cord wrapped around the handle of. What is that wrapped around there? Is that a boot lace? Yes, I suppose it must be. I've never thought of it that way. <laughs> well, it's a brave weapon you have there. All right. Um, yeah, I want to. Giant blood before, and he like kind of motions over to Langdon there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's continue forward. Yeah, let's keep moving forward. All right. So you move down, and uh, you reach the end of the stairs, and uh, you find yourself in slightly deeper water this time. Um, and it goes up uh, to your respective genitals, and uh, it's, it's piercingly cold. It's unpleasant. Good fucking God. Um, does it seem like there's any end in sight with this? Uh, you see uh, ahead with your keen uh, dark vision elven eyes um, that the, uh, the passageway narrows somewhat, and at the end, there's something in a kind of a lump uh, at the end of this, at the end of this strange uh, ancient tunnel. Um, I'm gonna go swim towards the lump. All right. Uh, yeah, you get you get a little bit deeper, and it's maybe getting up at you know well a little bit above your waist. And as you uh, move, you see kind of a, a there's like a stone or a boulder. Um, deeper on in the passage, kind of set to right where it begins to narrow. And uh, Langdon out front, Stephanie behind, then we've got Cumberland, then we've got Jerry. Can I uh, climb up on top of that boulder? Uh, yes. Cool, I'm gonna try to scramble and climb on top of it. Okay, sorry, just a second. Uh... All right, so you move forward and um, you climb on top of this boulder. And uh, if you get up on top of the boulder, you can kind of see toward the other side. And um, as you get up there, you can see that the passageway kind of bends around. Sorry, I dropped that. And uh, goes off to, to your left. Um, does it, is it still flooded with water? Uh, yes. Um, can I tell if there's any current to the water, if it, or is it just like standing water? Uh, it swirls around a little bit as it goes into this channel, and then uh, kind of, you know, banks on the on the wall there, and go and goes towards, uh, you know, turns around the corner basically. Um, and I'm going to end your action here. You you hopped up on that thing. We're going to move to Stephanie. All right. Uh... I, how will you remind me how high is this water that I'm in right now? Waist high or uh, high? Like waist deep, yeah. Um, um, I I'm I'm holding the lantern up, kind of closer to my head at this point, and uh, to Langdon I yell, "What do you see?" More water. It uh turns to the left. All right, uh, Langdon. As you open your mouth and you start to speak out, uh, you all of a sudden notice how slippery this rock is. And uh, you, as you're tossing your head up to shout, you slip backwards off the back of this rock and you fall into the water, splash, and the water kind of rushes over you. And uh, you, as you look up, uh, you see that the rock starts to unhinge and open up. You didn't so much slip as you were pushed off. And uh, Stephanie and you all see uh, this rock opens up, uh, not a rock in fact, but some kind of giant shell and a strange beast uh, uh, kind of oozes out in this, uh, you know, shiny pink mass, um, some kind of gigantic clam with uh, tentacles reaching forth, uh, rows of razor sharp teeth and, uh, and long kind of uh, hooks on the end of its tentacles. Uh, yeah. And it goes, Bleh. 
and it starts to like crawl towards you. It's the mist wanna... man. And so Stephanie. Can I, uh, can I go at it? Yeah, can I take City Skinner and try to hack at one of the, the tentacles? Uh yeah, it's a, it's not quite uh, within reach, but if you if you go towards it, you can yeah take a hack at it. All right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move towards it and take a hack. All right, uh, as you get near it, uh, kind of oozes one of these kind of pseudopods towards you. It raises it up, and uh, you see that it's on kind of a red membrane. It's got these uh, almost like some of the teeth, somewhere between teeth and claws, kind of jutting out, and it uh, swipes uh, out at you, and uh, so yeah, it's gonna take an attack on you as you're attacking at it. And so let's just both roll our attack roll right now. All right. Okay, I got I got a 17, but I think I get some sort of one-handed bonus because I'm holding a lantern in one and fighting with the other. Uh, so you, I think if you had your lantern on the other hand, you actually won't get your bonus. Oh, okay. You're, you're right. using your you're using your other hand. All right, I see. Well, I got a seventeen in that case, then. Okay. Well, you uh, as this thing reaches out to tentacle you, um, you slash it with uh, City Skinner. You hit, so do your damage. I don't know how to do damage. I've never gotten this far successfully. Okay. <laughs> so look under your knife and see, uh, it'll say something. I think it's a 2d4 for your city skinner. Yeah, it is. And then plus your strength. And in this case, you're not going to get your extra damage for, for your dual feet, but uh, just your, I think it's just your strength that you get. Okay. So it should say 2d4 plus something. What does a 2d4 mean though? I have a d4. Yeah, so you roll a d4 or dice twice. Okay. Just add them together. Okay, so I got, with all of that, I got a four plus two, so I got a six. Okay. So you uh, take a little slash on this thing, and as you slash it, it withdraws this tentacle back, and uh, it slightly closes its uh, shell uh, to kind of cover itself a little bit. And uh, we're going to move to Cumberland. <clears throat> All right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up there and uh, I'm gonna go towards it up to where Stephanie is, and I'm gonna yank Jerry by the rope. Go on, Jerry. <laughs> okay, you guys are tied. Are you guys tied together, or has he just got you on a line? <laughs> I think we're tied together. We're, oh yeah, we're tied together. Like I tied it around his waist, and then I ran the other end and tied it around my waist in case someone fell. Okay, so uh, you run forward, and uh, Jerry comes kind of bouncing behind you here, and uh, you're tall enough that you have to kind of stoop down a little bit in this tunnel. But uh, you're there, and uh, yeah, you see this thing kind of receding backwards. Um, yeah, so you're taking a swipe at it. Yeah, I'm going to take a little jab at its face with the rapier. Okay, so you step forward, down. you know, end point, and you uh, jet your rapier out. All right. Um, 17. Okay, so between this, uh, you know, it's closed its shell up a little bit, but uh, despite that, you jet forward and you uh, manage to strike. So what damage? Uh, eight damage. Eight damage. Okay, you poke this thing, and it uh, it feels as a little bit of fluid and blood squirts out from its face. And all of a sudden, it uh, snaps shut, shunk, and uh, kind of wiggles backward as it does so, blocking the uh, narrowing hole of this um, of this tunnel and stealing Langdon in behind it. Okay, I'm gonna. Can I go up and uh, take a big swing at it right? Square on the shell with my pickaxe. Excellent. Uh, yes. I'm going to say this is pretty much the perfect uh, weapon for this situation. So <laughs> you're, going to, uh, you're going to kind of uh, circumvent some of the uh, defenses of the shell here. So I'm going to say that uh, on, a, on a successful roll, you're actually going to cause damage to the shell and, and reduce the AC of this, uh, of this monster in its shell form. So I'm not going to tell you what that roll is, but anyways. Okay. 
Um, so I'm going steps forward, causing tautness in the line as he uh, comes in here at the uh, at this creature. Okay, I'm going to uh, two-handed uh, take an attack roll on it, and um, I oh, crap. I got a I got a seven. I got a seven. <laughs> He's going to the bathroom. Oh. Classic. <laughs> right in the height of action. I got a seven. Why do, you, why do you ever quit with the piss jugs is the question. <laughs> okay. All right, so your pickaxe bounces off the shell and then ricochets off the stone nearby, sending little chips flying. And uh, as, you, as it kind of goes wide, the shell opens up and two tentacles come out towards you and uh, grab at you. Oh, shit. And this strange thing kind of gurgles at you, and it's going to make two attacks on you. Okay, I've got a 15 and an 18. Do those hit you, either of those? Uh, the 18 does. All right, so this thing uh, hooks you, kind of. It, it reaches behind you and kind of, it, like, latches its little, uh, its little hooks here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, I don't know. Uh, on behind your back, kind of hooks you on the shoulder. And uh, hold on, I gotta get my other dice down here. Oh, the pain! Okay, it kind of grabs you oh. behind the shoulder and it does four points of damage as it spikes you uh, behind your right shoulder there. And uh, it's effectively got you slightly, it's, you're not skewered, but you're like you're in its claws right now. And Langdon, I think we go back to the top of the order. It is your turn, Langdon. Um, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. So am I, am I on the other side of that wall now? or You're on the other side of this thing, and there's like the, the hole gets quite narrow. And you, uh, if you stand up, you see that your, your path is uh, enough obscured by the shell of this thing that you can't uh, get back to the other side. Um, would I be able to um, climb up it with my rapier out? Um, and uh, just try to get to the lip of him? Uh, you, you could kind of reach your rapier through maybe, but the, the ceiling gets low enough here. Everything gets like, you know, kind of tapers inward that you could only maybe get one hand through and kind of reach around, but you couldn't climb up on enough to get, you know, past it. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to try to... Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to try to uh, jab him with my rapier from... Um, as best as I can from behind, trying to look for like a like a crevice or something that I can poke him through. Okay, I'm gonna let you make an attack against him at disadvantage in that sense. In that instance. Okay, cool. Uh, eighteen. Okay, uh, eighteen is that's your at disadvantage. That's it. Yeah, I rolled a um, I rolled an eighteen okay. and, and a twenty. So. Yeah. You roll your damage. You manage to get your sword in at a strange angle and poke in some of the, uh, the oh, nice. flesh of this beast. Sick. I got 13 damage. 13 damage. Okay. <laughs> I rolled almost maximum, so. All right. So at that, uh, this thing uh, kind of uh, closes up and, like, kind of it, it releases its hold on Jerry and uh, kind of pushes Jerry backwards. It closes and then like, you know, one tentacle kind of squiggles it a little bit and then it turns and it faces towards uh, you instead, Langdon. Fuck me. And uh, it's gonna make two attacks on you as it's uh, got this big cut in it. Uh, that's one uh, critical and one not hit. Okay, cool. so it raises one of these claws and it sweeps, uh, sweeps it out towards you. And uh, seven damage as nice. it obscures you and uh, starts to uh, pull you in towards it. And we move on to Cumberland. Uh, that, uh, that takes me to negative one. Oh, okay. So, so uh, you, uh, you know, your vision goes black as this thing starts to bring it towards your many, its many road mouth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And Cumberland. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna 
I'm going to go along the right side of the wall there and I'm going to try and um, I'm going to go for an attack with the uh, the the butt of the Colvarian wand on uh, its little right tentacle there. You cracking with your uh, okay. Yeah. Um, 16. Uh, 16 hits. Roll your damage. Cool. Uh, this is 2d4. That's nine damage. Okay, so uh, this thing uh, screeches out, it wriggles in pain, and it drops Langdon into the water, and he splashes and goes under, and it sucks itself back into its shell here, blocking the, the, uh, blocking the way. And uh, we move to Stephanie. All right. Um... Let's see. I'm gonna. I, I, a, I'm gonna try to catchphrase or some clever phrase of dialogue, Stephanie. What? Give us a, a catchphrase or some short, clever phrase of dialogue here. Give us some flavor text. Oh God. Your action. Let's get a. Let's get some. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just say something funny real quick. Uh. No, I, I, Steph, Stephanie has, Steph, I don't know, Stephanie's really got nothing here. Langdon's dying. <laughs> I don't know if I, like, uh, can I, I, I'm, she's not super stoked that Langdon's about to die. <laughs> Finally, the uh, no, Stephanie, the Stephanie feels bad. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, like, slide over the the top of the shell and I'm just gonna say I'll save you and try to kind of scoop Langdon up and hold him above water. Oh, that's cute. Thank you. Okay, make yeah, you're a, welcome. make a uh, dexterity check or an athletic check to. Uh, it's a very tight squeeze to get over the top of the shell. It's really kind of blocked itself into the entrance. So, if you make a if you make a check like athletics or just dexterity based uh, above a 17, I'll let you slide over it, squeeze your way through. All right. Wow. Uh, cool. No pressure. <laughs> oh, no, I got a two. All right, so, so you jump up and you start to slide in. Your legs kind of go uh, go out and you just kind of get stuck uh, on top of this thing with your back arched uh, back and all of a sudden you find yourself looking upside down facing uh, Langdon and Jerry as you're kind of spread and with your feet stuck on top of the thing. <laughs> Let it be known that the last thing I said was still, I'll save you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Cumberland, is it your turn or is it Jerry's turn? Uh, it's Jerry. It's Jerry's turn, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to try and pull Stephanie like off the shell and upright. All right, go ahead and give us a strength check. All right, I got a 21. All right, you pop her right out, and uh, you put her upright. Boop. You can take another action if you like. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take another swing at the, uh, at the muscly man. All right, with the make, pick. Your, make your attack. Uh, ooh, this time I got a 24. All right, uh, was that a natural crit? No, it's a 19 natural. Oh. Isn't a 19 a crit for a pickaxe? I think it's 20 only, but the critical is times four when you oh, hit it. Okay, I see. Well, you bring your pickaxe down, and great like bits of like shell break off, and you go deep into this thing, and just like gore just like shoots up into your face, like covering your beard and your bandana, and uh, there's this you know very much a fresh oyster smell as it you know kind of squirts all over you. And uh, the, sh the shell slowly opens, and this thing kind of oozes out. Um, you know, it's it's dead. Okay. And uh, now we go to the top of the order, Langdon. Let's see if you can stabilize. Cool. Um, so I just read about it real quick. It looks like there's such a thing as death saves, and I have to if I succeed on three, I stabilize. If I 
fail on three, I die, and the save is a 10 with no modifiers. Okay. Uh, according to just what I just read, does that sound right? Uh, that's fine with me. Cool. So that's if you save on three checks? Huh? Yeah, three checks I stabilize, yeah. Okay, cool. That's cool. I like that rule. So I just got a 16, so I passed my first one. Okay, so one down. I'll mark that down. Yeah. Uh, unless, you... unless someone can do like a heel check to stabilize me. Right. Assist, you know. Okay, uh, Stephanie, it's your turn again. You are upright, and this thing is uh, spread open, kind of blocking the path before you. Uh, all right. Can I, I? I can't squeeze past it at all. There's no. No, it's it's blocking things uh, with its body and its shell. All right. Can I can I try to like hack off a tentacle or something to get around it? Uh, yeah. You can you can hack off pieces. You'll have to move it to get around it. Uh, Might be easier if you have okay. Well, then, can I just try to? Can I just try to? I just want to try to shove it then. If I'm gonna have to move it regardless, I want to try to push it out of the way. Why don't we? Um, can we can we kind of talk through this since combat's technically over? Yeah, combat's over. You guys, we'll give you some open talk here. You got a minute. Go for it, you guys. Okay. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we untie the rope from me and we'll uh, we'll wrap it around one of the tentacles here so that um, so that cummerbund can help help us pull. And I'll pull on one tentacle and you pull on another. Sounds like a plan. That sounds good to me. Okay. So uh, I guess, yeah, we'll we'll do that. And uh, yeah, once we get him out of the way enough, I don't know if uh, the water will push him back in the spot into the place he's at now. But uh, if we get him out enough, Stephanie, you go through and uh, you attend to Langdon. Sounds good. Okay. So you want us to all roll strength checks, Woody? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Thirteen. I got a twelve. I got a thirteen as well. All right. So the three of you, uh, you guys are pulling each a tentacle, and Cumberland's there pulling with his waist, stepping backwards. You manage to uh, pull this thing forward, and it just pulls right out of its shell, and uh, you pull it away up the tunnel here. There we go. Sure and it's climbing. weird. It's weird. Naked body is there, you know, all cut up and like you know, gored through, and it's there with its eyes like lolling, you know. Okay. Well, is the shell still obstructing the pathway then? Yes. Okay. It should be a lot easier to move now without his body in there, though. I agree. Uh, yeah. Why don't? Is the water flowing that direction, Woody? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, Cumber Cumberbund, why don't you uh, you hold him there with the rope, and then uh, I'll move the shell, and Stephanie, you get behind it. Sounds good. Should okay. I make another saving throw? Yeah, go for it. Oh, nat twenty. Um, according to the um, the SRD, it says if you roll a nat twenty, you regain a hit point. Okay. So you go back up to one. So you're up to one. Yeah. So I uh, so I become stable and I'm conscious again. Okay. So you uh, shake it off and uh, holding on to your uh, gore wound, you stand up and uh, you emerge from the water. There, Langdon. Sick. <laughs> and uh, the shell is still there, blocking uh, your vision here. Um. Cool. I'm gonna holler at them and say I'm all right. Just a moment of. Uh, just a moment of shock is all. Yeah, they can tell through your. You say, I'm a man. And they can scream out to him. And uh, they can tell that you're up, but uh, definitely injured. Is he like throwing up like water that we've ingested? Like water, and he's like speaking through like cracked lips that have been like, you know, beaten and stuff. He's just, he's definitely like hurting. <laughs> But his arrogance won't really let him admit so. Um, I'm gonna try to push the shell out of the way if it if I can still do an action. 
Uh, yeah, so you managed to uh, maneuver the shell and turn it so that it's no longer blocking your path. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to come out and go over to them with the big old monster creature. All right, so you see them uh, holding this slimy big uh, organ of a thing. Um, I'm going to put my hand inside of it and see if it's, uh, I want to see if it's warm inside. Uh, it is. It's warm inside. Um, I really need a break. My feet are freezing. I'm almost dying. Um, I say we uh, haul this guy up to um, the steps at least, um, maybe like further back up to the pathway if we can, and uh, uh, like to a dry point, and then um, those of us who are freezing should put our feet inside of its warm body to warm up. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we can do that. Some people got to do gross stuff. <laughs> okay, so you're going to drag this thing up onto the stairs? <laughs> um, I, think, I think it's a good idea. Um, I've, used, I've used animals for heat before when, uh, when I've been on the freezing plains of the veldt um, in winter. So this wouldn't be the first time I've had to get into a dirty situation to survive. Okay, well, if you drag this thing thumping up the stairs, you can reach the uh, kind of catwalk you were on before and have a even little bit of a ledge to rest on. I want to I wanna reach inside and see if it, there's any, uh, any pearl inside. Uh, <laughs> make a search check. nine a nine yeah uh you reach in but you feel like you don't quite uh, get your hand in where you're looking for you kind of you kind of don't uh, quite get in but if you want to just take a 10 on the check you can do 10 plus your uh you know relevant modifiers okay yeah um yeah i'll take a 10 for it um be like a perception or uh, wisdom, yeah, if you don't have search. Uh, yeah, search is under perception now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's a plus one for me. Okay, so you get this thing up on a catwalk, and you uh, dig around in there, and uh, you pull forth a uh, large, like a baseball-sized, uh, you, you feel yourself grasp, grasp on a warm baseball-sized object, as you pull it out, you see this uh, shining red uh, object, uh, spherical object here, kind of cast some red light onto the scene. And it looks like, uh, almost like a huge piece of somnium, like oversized. Oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> um, I'm gonna search around for any oversized lemons that maybe we could squeeze on him. And <laughs> the other thing is someone could crawl inside of it and then put their arms in the tentacles and then like use it well, like a puppet. I was gonna crawl inside of it so I could <laughs> like a Langdon thing. <laughs> <laughs> we could scare off scare scare off the next enemies by pretending to be that thing. <laughs> we could just keep pushing it through the tunnel and have it scare everything off. All right, Langdon, uh, you uh, are feeling, despite your bravado, you're feeling pretty tired and, uh, you know, wounded and, like, maybe you could deal with uh, some, some rest and regrouping here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I really badly need a, a break. Um, elves only need to meditate for four hours to get there, to get, like, a, a good night's rest. So if we could just hang out for a few hours, um, I'd be, I'd be tip-top again soon. How much uh, oil do you have in your lantern there? Um, I have, so there'd be one thing of oil in the lantern and then I have one in my, one extra um, oil in my pack. Um, but I don't know how long an oil, an oil would last. So let's say that um, this uh, current lantern oil you're doing is going to last you long enough to have a rest uh -huh. uh, for the whole party, you know, if that means like, you know, whatever. Um, and then you'll start expending your next thing of oil after you rest. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, you could all definitely use a bite to eat also. 
Yeah, let's start thing up. Yeah. I'd try a little bit. So, uh, how, how are you going to prepare this thing? I'm going to take a little little thin slice off with the with my rapier and try it. Or it's just going to be eaten raw. Just slop it, slurp it down. Of course, it's an oyster that was found in poo-poo water. <laughs> this isn't necessarily the same water because this is that that led not to like a waterfall. This is this is this is clear water, or you know, at least it's not the same poo-poo water. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, so we're all waiting to see if uh, it's a bit fruity, what but it has a uh, has a pretty nice uh, flavor actually. Mm-hmm. I've had worse meals or appetizers, depending how the the day goes. <laughs> All right, eat our way through this tunnel. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, I'll slice off a few pieces and we'll we can eat some, I guess. I'll help Dr. Cumberbund prepare a little bit of a meal. Okay, so are you all intending to rest uh, during this period? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Well, are we gonna rest? Uh, are we basically doing like like a night's worth of sleep? Uh huh. Maybe should we do uh, should we do shifts in case there's some other uh, some other unforeseen beast lurking down here? That works for me. I don't really need rest at I'm this hurt. point. I'm kind of hurting at this point. I only have six hit points left. Uh, what if I'll, I'll I can take guard while y'all rest if you will uh, trust Stephanie to perform that task. No, I don't. <laughs> Let's give you guys a minute. I want character dialogue. Wait, what I did think, you just say? I think we could all benefit from some rest here, and. Uh, it, wouldn't seem like too much of a stretch to uh, just take turns uh, keeping watch. That way we can each regain some health here. Yeah, I'm for that. That's fine uh, with me, but, I, but I'm not perfect. I, I never got injured. Okay. Well, in any case. I, but I, will, I will sleep or rest. If, it's probably uh, not a good I, idea to one person up all night you, things could get uh you know your mind can start to play tricks without rest so well, i'm certainly not gonna argue against some rest stephanie why don't you you take first watch since you're so energetic and then uh and then cumberbun you take second i'll take third and then langdon you can take last uh, that sounds fine to me. Um, I only need four hours total, so uh, so by the time um, by the time I uh, I'm done, I'll be uh, completely all better, ready to go again. So that works for me. Okay. Okay. So uh, you start your shifts, uh, chewing in uh, in silence, I suppose. I don't know, uh, chewing your slain oyster and um the the time although you know it doesn't quite seem like night uh, passes uneventfully and so does anybody know the strict rules for regaining uh, for night's rest uh and yeah i just looked at it and then it just your levels worth the hit points uh no in five edith- in, fi- in fifth edition um healing is so much more streamlined um, a long rest, um, which is eight hours of downtime of like sleeping, um, regains all your entire hit points back to max. Um, and then you can take a short rest between uh, between sleeping, which is at least an hour long, where you actually roll the like your hit die, um, and you can and regain that many hit points if you're so you're you're like resting for an hour. All right. So well, we let's say everybody gets three of those uh, short rests worth. So make three rolls. Okay, cool. Wait, what do you roll? You're just your, uh, your... Your hit die. Your hit okay. die, yeah. Uh, okay. Where did we get three, you said? Yeah, 
you get to do it three times. Plus your constitution okay. modifier each time. Is that right, Jeff? Uh, yeah, plus your con. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's it's your hit die, whatever that is, plus your con. 30, okay. That still, that still put me at full. I'm full. I'm full. Yeah, me too. Okie dokie, are we ready to proceed? I'm at 18 out of 21, but I'm good. Okay. I think we're good. Yeah, I'm good. All right, what's your move, guys? I kind of wish I would have slept inside of the the oyster, but okay. I don't know that you didn't. I mean, I don't know that it was popular with the rest of your party, but... Okay, I definitely <laughs> did. I used it as like a big, uh, a big wet sleeping bag. All right, so Langdon's now definitely got a funky smell on him at this point. Uh, makes me blend in with the rest of the environment, though. So Yeah, whatever you got to tell yourself. Okay, so um, Langdon, you uh, – so so you guys, are you headed back down to where you were before? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to go down that way. Um, I'll let them know that there's a um, – there's a – a quick left turn after that junction where we ran into this beast um, and beyond there's more water, but um, I guess it's the only way to go. Okay, so you uh, make your way back down to where you were. You move past the broken bits of shell and gore and you turn the tunnel and uh, again, you see a small, uh, you know, rivulet waterfall spraying out into wide darkness. And um, you see another little path that you can walk along, uh, kind of a stone uh, ledge again that leads kind of around the curve on this cliff wall. Um, yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry, what was that? There was a ledge you said? Yeah, so you're going to have, there's now a, uh, like a ledge that bends around the cliff wall in this, you know, wide dark space, basically. Great. Um, I guess I'll go clamber up against the ledge and uh, like put my body against the side and like just kind of scoot around it as yeah. follow the ledge around. The, the ledge is comfortable enough. It's, it's wide enough to even comfortably, but not too comfortably kind of shimmy along it without, uh, without really any real effort, but it is kind of uncanny not knowing how the deep and uh, everything that these, uh, these kind of chasms go. And uh, so Langdon's out front, shimmying around there. Yeah, I'll go. I'll, I can go out front. Okay, so you. Uh, Unless shimmy, someone else wants to. You shimmy around the corner, and then you uh, end up on a wider platform, um, and you kind of have a, a wider space to uh, to maneuver. And uh, we'll tell you what you see uh, after the next action here. So who's cool. next in the order? I think I am. All right, yeah. Stephanie, are you following? Totally, yeah. Um, I have the lantern. I'm behind Langdon. I'm shimmying. Okay, so we're born in the new oil now. You uh, you shimmy out there along with Langdon, and you come to a uh, – hold on, i got to clear some things real quick. But you, you, you join him on this platform, and you see now that there's a fair uh, rock outcropping off of the wall, and um, there's kind of a – uh unknown depth of kind of cavern below but um you see uh coming off of this uh rock outcropping is a uh there are two little posts and uh some uh old kind of you know tropified um rope bridge uh this rope bridge is totally tropy tropified Utterly tropified. Okay. So yeah, you can see it. It goes off into like a uh, another stone platform there. Okay. Ah. 
and uh, let's move uh, okay. to um, Dr. Cumberbund. All right. Um, uh, so Jerry, Jerry, you want to tie up again? Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. I want to tie back on or, or let him tie on to the rope that's still tied on to me, I guess. Okay. Um, and then I'll, I'll <coughs> to where the other two are. Are we, so uh, are we all on a narrow passageway right now? Uh, you come around the corner, basically. Um, I'll give a little finger nod here. You come around like here and it it's a little catwalk that leads around and now you have a wider platform. And uh, you can see, I'll kind of make some lines with some blocks, but the, the, the kind of the, the vast gorge is beyond the, you know, perimeter of these, uh, these rock pieces. Okay. Kind of drops off from there. Uh, okay. And then you see, uh, there's this, uh, you know, catwalk, uh, rickety bridge going across to this other platform and that's about as far as you can see okay well uh, i guess we'll we'll tie off and proceed uh so you guys are going around the catwalk to join them on this uh on this outcropping <coughs> yeah okay so you're now all facing yeah. down this uh, this rope bridge, and you two are tethered to each other. Uh, how much more rope do you have, Jerry? Um, I've got 50 feet of rope, so it'd probably be enough where we could either, I don't know if we'd necessarily all want to tie off together, but we could probably cut it in half, and you two could tie off together also, or something like that. Uh, or do you think we should all tie off together? Um, I mean, I could probably like attach it to my belt loop and tie off that way so it doesn't use so much rope. If that works for you. I suppose it's like if I was just worried like if we tie off all together that we risk like oh, right. making everyone fall. But it seems like that would be less likely, and it, it's probably only likely for one person to fall at a time. Uh, easier. I think we should all just tie off together in a line. Uh, so, you guys, uh, anybody who looks over the side who has dark vision or even like low light vision, I believe yeah. that's the elf and the half elf. Yeah. Um, you can see that it's about like 30 or maybe 35 feet down, it's like two stories down. Um, but you can see, uh, that there is like all kinds of detritus down below. Uh, you can't really tell what it is like a bunch of sticks or like, uh, yeah, you, there's, there's, a, there's like rubble down below. All right. Is it, uh, is it floating on water or is it just like, it doesn't look like it's moving at all. Okay. Yeah. It looks like it would be a pretty hard fall if we, uh, if we if we did end up falling yeah it's it's like not a life it's i mean i guess it's a life threatening fall it's not a pleasant fall in any case possibly a life threatening fall you definitely it would hurt cool and how is everybody for time time by the way um i could play for a little while longer probably you guys want to do like another half hour or another hour or what i could probably only do so that. i nah. yeah i could do another half hour i didn't bring my laptop to your home i was at work on accident so i'm at 20 percent, but that'll last me a half hour easy okay well let's just press forward with it then um i think we're probably we'd we'll be at the top of the order by now yeah uh, i guess so yeah oh. what well, aren't we just are we just walking I uh I guess who does anyone in the party think that we shouldn't tie off together, like all four of us together? No, I think it's a good idea. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's all tie off together then. 
as okay. a foursome. Yeah, we just need to establish a marching order. So uh, someone with low light vision should be up front. Uh, Not me, but I do have a lantern, so I do have the only source of light, so maybe I should go first. Okay. So, Stephanie up front, and... I'll be uh, right behind her. Okay, then Landon, and then uh, I'll I'll take up the back, so right. then... Uh, I'll go after that. Then me. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so sorry, who was going first? Me. I'm going to start the me laying down on Jerry. All right, and about how far apart are you tied? Uh, I guess it would be... In terms of like close or, or like near or far? I'd say relatively it near. It would be about like... Five feet. Five feet between us, yeah. That sounds okay. right. So Stephanie, you move out onto the bridge, and uh, things are a little bit crickety. You kind of sway back and forth, and there are no handrails on this bridge. So I'm going to have you make a dexterity check against failure to stay on this bridge. Okay. Uh, I got an 18. Okay, so you, uh, you successfully maneuver the bridge. You get about halfway before you start to yank on the next person in line. Who is that? That's me. All right, Langdon, you start getting yanked. Are you going to make a dex check to cross here? Yeah, I am. All right, go for it. Against the failure. Um, I've definitely passed. I got a, night, a natural 19. Do you continue, Stephanie? All right, yes. Okay, so you move on and you meet the end of the bridge. Langdon is near the center and the line pulls on the next individual. Okay. Yeah, I'll go forward. Uh, 19. 19, okay. Stephanie moves on to this uh, stone platform here. Langdon's at the end of the bridge, and Cumberland is in the middle here. And, uh, Gary, you get uh, you start getting pulled here. Okay, uh, I will cross, and I got a six. Six. Okay, despite yeah. causing a little bit of shake in the in the situation, you manage to stay upright, and you get onto the bridge. And uh, as Cumberland's nearing the end, and as uh, sorry about that, as God damn it, <laughs> this is tripified, dude. All right, Langdon gets to the end here, and we've got, or he gets, uh, yeah, and we've got Cumberland towards the end, and we've got Jerry. And I want Stephanie to make a perception check. All right. That's not going to go well, probably. Yeah, uh, solid five. What do you solid see? Five. Okay, Stephanie, uh, through the lantern light, you see something far ahead. And uh, you see, like, you know, you see there's another stone platform, and then there's something beyond that. Um, and uh, Langdon, you see that Stephanie's peering into the distance. I'm going to give you a perception check as well. Uh, 16. Okay, so uh, Langdon, you see um, off in the distance, peering over Stephanie's shoulder, the unwelcome sight of... Uh, a little creature um, off in the distance here holding a, uh, a lever in its hand and all of a sudden you hear a shrill high voice and uh, <laughs> the goblin shouts out, let's go fucking grizz, let's go fucking grizz! And uh, he pulls the lever and as he pulls the lever uh, all of a sudden uh, Jerry and Langdon feel the bridge fall from underneath their feet and um, they uh, start to fall into uh, this ca this cavern here, fall down. Can I, could I give them like a, when uh, seeing the dude, could I like yell at them to try to like make, give them like a chance to reflex save to it? Or at least. Um, uh, yeah, you could give them a, you can give uh, Cumberland a chance to make a dex check to jump and grab onto the ledge here. 
Okay. Jeremy's got really no chance of that. 21. All right, so you uh, jump forward as this happens, pulling Cumberland behind you, and you uh, grab onto the ledge here. Okay. Give me, give me your hand, boy. So you're on the ledge, and then uh, Jerry is dangling uh, just above. Uh, he's dangling kind of halfway between uh, this platform and the ground below. Kind of swinging free, Jerry. You're don't free. let me die. <laughs> okay, and. Um, Who's, whose turn was it uh, just then? That was Stephanie. It was Langdon. I think it's Langdon's turn. Uh, well, I, I did the spot check and the, and the call yeah. for help. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. So let's move on to uh, Cumberland. Okay. All right. Cumberland, you're dangling, and Jerry's, like, pulling you down a bit. Stop, stop kicking your legs, Jerry. I'm going to have to cut you loose. All right, so I have to interject here for a uh, Jerry action. Uh, Jerry, you're swinging the ropes around your waist and you're dangling hands and feet downward <laughs> as you're like, <laughs> as the rope's going up behind you and you're swinging over. You're uh, fairly close to the ground now. I want you to make a perception check. Okay. Got a 19. Okay, uh, Jerry, as you're dangling, you have a closer view of the ground, and you see the ground is littered with desiccated corpses. Um, just like you can't even really see the ground. Well, you can see patches of ground, but there are all these, like, you know, um, sickeningly emaciated bodies uh, lining the uh, bottom of this, uh, you know, of this area. You guys, pull me up, pull me up, pull me up. And uh, at, do you have any somnium on you there, Jerry? I do not. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you're swinging above these things, and uh, it's, it's disgusting, yeah. And um, it was okay, so back to uh, Cumberland. Okay. I'm going to try and pull myself up. Strength check. Strength check. I, uh, can I out outreach my hand to help him? Yes, you can assist him. So you have advantage on your strength check. Okay, I just rolled an 11 uh, and a 3. So 11's my one. All right, so you don't, like, go any farther down, but you don't really pull yourself up yet here. And, um, yeah, uh, as you guys are uh, pulling there, Stephanie, um, you see this goblin. Uh, now you can see there's a goblin ahead, and uh, you hear him uh, shouting out as his cries echo through the caverns. Skull fucking Grizz! Skull fucking Grizz! Fucking up skulls, you could call it his biz! And he pulls another lever, and this other uh, bit of bridge uh, collapses and falls down. All right. Uh, can I, he, he's, I mean, he's clearly, he's clearly aware of us, so I want to try to, can I, is he close enough that I could shoot him with my boomerang, or not my boomerang, my uh, slingshot? Yeah, you could, you could slingshot at him. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to try to make that happen. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make make an attack roll. All right, I got a 17. Okay, so you aim carefully and you let loose a uh, a slingshot round, and it flies out into the darkness and roll your damage. Um, I exited out of it. Sorry. Just trying to. Uh... What are you looking for? I don't know what my I don't know what to roll for my slingshot is because I. So your slingshot have should have a um, an attack bonus there written on it. Uh... Yeah, I exited out of it. That's what I'm. I'm trying to bring it back. Trying to, trying to save battery and. Uh, oh yeah, I think it's uh well it's probably just going to be your dexterity bonus which is I think plus two. Yeah. So it's going to be just a d20 plus two, or no that's to hit. Uh, you already hit I think. So it's going to be I think it's just yeah. a d4 for your slingshot. So a d4 a d4 plus your strength modifier. All right, I got four in that case. I have it back open. So. Four total. Yeah. Four total. All right, so you this thing whoosh, 
it like whips off in the air, and then you hear this clink, and it's like, ow, shit! And this thing stumbles backwards, and you get, you smacked it in the noggin with a little missile. And uh, yeah, uh, let's go to our next in the order, and that would be who? Langdon. Uh, Langdon, yeah. Cool. Uh, following Stephanie's lead, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out my longbow and shoot at this dude. Okay. Uh, so that is a 12. Attack? For my attack roll, yeah, 12. Uh, okay, that hits. It hits? Yes. Whoa, nice. Uh, eight points of damage. Okay, so you uh, slice this thing through the throat and it goes down. And uh, as it goes down, you see two little archers clamber up onto this rock, two little garbage archers. Go fucking Grizz! Go fucking Grizz! And they, uh, they shoot off some uh, rounds towards you. God damn it! But they both miss. Uh, their arrows uh, missing widely. And um, whose turn is it now? Is it Jerry? Yeah, uh, my still dangling, right? All right, That's Jerry, uh, from no, your... Uh, no. Is it Jerry or who is it? It's doctor. It's the doctor's turn. Oh, the good yeah. doctor. Okay. okay. So, doctor, uh, you are you're still struggling to pull up here. All right. Um, let's see. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, Fifteen. You can pull yourself up. So you are now up top, and Jerry uh, pulls up a bit higher here. Sweet. And uh, Dr. Cumberland, you see uh, some ropes have descended on this catwalk from some space above, and two little goblins slide down on these ropes. And uh, yeah, they're over there on the rock. They're going to start throwing spears at you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't believe either of them hit you, so the spears go wide. And uh, it's your turn. You can you can have one more action, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up on the rope to try and get uh, get Jerry. Uh, see if I can lift him up at all. Sure. And can I? Oh, I guess I guess when it's my turn. But um, do, can I make like a strength check or anything to like grab onto the ledge or? Uh, you don't really have a ledge where you're dangling. If you could be pulled up enough, you could grab onto the ledge. Yeah, you could climb your rope. Okay. Yeah. I think we could do that. But let's let's uh, hear the strength check from Langdon. Uh, Fifteen. Okay, so he pulls you up, and uh, you're now up there with him on this platform. Okay. And yeah, so uh, now it is your turn, uh, Jerry. Okay. Um, I guess maybe with the way things look, it looks like we're kind of stuck on this one spot, right? Yeah, basically. So who has the highest dexterity or who who is the most nimble? Who like? Would it be feasible to jump between uh, two of these kind of outcrops? Uh, it might be, yeah. You Somebody, if they made a real good jump, might be able to make it or at least grab onto the dangling rope bridge uh, from either side. Um, I've, got, I've got a really good dex. And as you guys uh, are standing here, uh, you can see more goblins assembling themselves um, on either side of your predicament here. You've obviously... Hit some kind of a trap here. Hmm. Um, okay, maybe we should untie and just uh, have uh, Langdon try and jump across with the rope and then anchor it from each side to try and move forward. He could, I'm like, shoot really sure. it across, right? Doesn't Langdon have a bow? So we tie the rope to the bow, shoot it across, and then see if we can get it to stick somewhere? Well, yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know if an arrow would definitely really anchor the rope very well. I don't even know if an arrow would actually carry the rope across. If we're talking okay, about, so, uh, Jerry, we could, you got, you we got could uh, here, just climb down this thing. Can. Yeah, what's down there? Dead oh, the, bodies and shit. There's, there's tons of dead bodies. They're everywhere. I couldn't even see the floor of the the floor of the cave. Well, uh, well it, beats, it beats being up here getting shot at. I say we climb down. What's your move, Jerry? Um. I don't know. I think we need to come to a consensus whether we want to try and move, I guess. All right, that's the end of your turn, Jerry. We're going to move uh, on to uh, who's the top of the order? I am. Stephanie. Stephanie, it is your turn. Right. Goblin arrows and spears are coming towards you here. I'm going to roll a few attacks. Uh, a couple of misses. Oh, Jesus, a couple more misses. These are some unlucky dice here. Okay. Uh, it's, your, it's your action, Stephanie. Um, I, I, I'm very much on board with climbing down. I think we should climb down. We... Okay, Stephanie, if you want to climb down, it's your action. Yeah, I'm climbing down. I'm going. I'm going to... Guys, I think we should head down. We got to get out of this. And then I'm going to start climbing down. Okay, so uh, you're kind of near one of these kind of faces of the rock you want to start climbing down on this one yep all right uh make a climb check i guess uh dexterity here or maybe strength strength i guess yeah and yeah they're both they're pretty similar to me okay i got a 21. okay so you definitely climb down here and as you reach the bottom you start to tug at the rope um well even before you reach the bottom you're halfway you start tugging on langdon's cord here What's I your forgot move? I was Langdon, you've been prompted into a situation here. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna follow, um, but I guess I'm wondering, would I be able to um, shoot off one more arrow at uh, the dudes behind us, the close, the ones that are closest to... Yeah. Yeah. You shoot off one more arrow, arrow and then uh, climb my way down. That's the okay. move I want to do. I just want to make sure that that's okay. Yeah, that's okay with me. Uh, so as she's pulling you, you can feel it. And as you're you're walking, holding the tension, and you're firing an arrow off with uh, with your hands as you're being pulled by your waist. Cool. I got a 19. Okay, so you fire off an arrow. What's your damage? Nine. And you uh, hear the squeal, squeals of a, Go fucking grass! Go fucking grass! If you figure... Yeah! And he gets, uh, got, you know, squished through the head with an arrow. And uh, yeah, there's one less goblin voice in the in the crowd there. And right. uh, you make a climb check. Yep, down we go. Oh, uh, seven. Oh wait, no. Uh, sorry, nine. Nine. Okay. Nine. So as, you're, uh, as you're climbing down, you slip and your uh, your your hand uh, slips <laughs> and there's a rock that crumbles and you start to tumble down and you start to fall. Stephanie, you fall and you plop on the bottom of the uh, of the you know chasm here. And uh, Langdon, you also fall, and I'm going to let you roll a dex check to see if you take damage here. Against a 12. Uh, nice, 13. Okay, so you, uh, despite the fall, you land on your feet, but you're yanking someone behind with you. Um, so, Cumberland, uh, you're getting pulled off the side here. What's your, what's your response? Okay. Um... Am I, am I, is it like actively like his weights on me or? Uh, yeah, you're starting to get pulled across the floor here. Your feet are skidding, you know, if you're, if you're resisting. Okay. Um, his weight and, and a little bit of Stephanie's weight. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to um, kind of back up with uh, my heels towards the ledge and try and control my, uh, my approach to the edge so I can start climbing down. All right, make a strength check. Uh, four. All right, so as you put in your heels, you, uh, you rock back, but then you're pulled forward and you fly over the edge here as you're pulled. And um, Sam, uh, or Gary, I want you to also make a strength check here. Uh, I got a five. 
All right, so you get pulled right behind here, and I want you guys to both make dex checks as you tumble over the edge here. 16. I got a four. All right, uh, Lang, or, uh, Cumberland, you managed to kind of, as you get pulled over the side, you managed to like kind of grab onto the rocks a bit. You slide down. You don't take any damage. But, uh, Jerry, as you uh, tumble over the side, you uh, land kind of rough on the top of these other guys, and you take uh, three subdual damage here from the fall. You guys all kind of land in a puddle down here, uh, in a pile rather, not a puddle. That'd be strange. And um, you land with a thud on uh, the desiccated bodies of, uh, you know, these. you land on some of these, you land on bodies basically as you hit the bottom. And they're, uh, they're old and they're kind of like covered in cave dust and it looks like there was some kind of massacre here or something. Well, I like, th I like that vibe a lot. Um, I'm going to untie myself from the rope. Okay. I'm, I'm sick of all these rope shenanigans. So uh, you guys are deep enough down now that uh, there are some occasional uh, arrows and uh, spears coming down at you, and there's this little alcove underneath that you might be able to duck under for cover. Yeah, I like that idea is ducking under the, the alcove for a minute. Can I uh, uh, peek in there to see if there's anything in there before we go in? There, this uh, area under the alcove is clear. There's nothing there. This way. Dead bodies. Okay, so you, uh, Langdon, you duck under here. You guys going under here to get arrow yep. cover? Yep. Take cover. All right, you duck under here to, uh, like you said, uh, get some protection. And uh, <clears throat> who's got the most somnium right now? I do. Okay. Oh, that's a little tight. Okay. So, um, as you're under here, uh, you, you, after a while, like the, the slings and arrows no longer come. It looks like they figured out that they're not going to hit you. But, uh, as you're standing under here, um, all of a sudden, uh, you see the bodies begin to stir and slowly mm -hmm. they draw themselves up and, uh, you see the desiccated corpses of, uh, you know, pain souls basically slowly rise and uh, there's red fire starting to uh, kind of shine out from their eye sockets and uh, every once in a while as they start to rise, um, one of them will convulse violently and create this uh, sickening kind of rattling, clattering sound, kind of uh, like some, uh, yeah, like some really Melling or macabre maraca, you know, and uh, macabre maracas, <laughs> macabre maraca, and uh, you see all these bodies start to raise and with red in their eyes, and uh, we'll leave that as a cliffhanger for the next uh, the next session. So <coughs> as we uh, as, as we uh, as we close the session, we're going to go around and uh, one minute on everybody get their thoughts. We'll start with Dr. Cumberbund. Oh uh, shit, things are getting intense down here. But anything that's guarded this heavily, it's got to be good sign as far as the riches. Uh, I got this huge somnium pearl, which I don't know if there's any use, but it's certainly worth something. Uh, um, I'm thinking about uh, maybe using my fancy red coat sometime soon now that everything's getting all creepy and red. Uh, got soaked earlier, soaked to the bone, which actually covered the fact that I pissed myself, which is really nice. Uh, um, yeah, I thought I had lost my little buddy, but he's still there. I hope he, I hope he's ready to to fight because shit's about to get real. All right, and Stephanie. What the fuck is this shit? Now there's dead people everywhere. I don't remember signing on to this. I'm still attached to people via a rope. And also, I've got like a ton of treasure that I haven't addressed in a really long time. 
And I'm going to ask that tiny rat man if he knows what the orders of crinolations are. And I hope no one remembers how much somnium I have left. <laughs> uh, oh, and I, I am just like, you know, I tried to save Langdon and I hope that counts for something, but ultimately I just kind of tripped onto a clam. <laughs> so, but, but it, but in my mind, we're, we're even for the whole slingshot to the back of the head thing. Um, because of that gesture I made earlier. Um, and I wonder what sort of, uh, secret organization goodies we're going to find at the end of this. I'm doubtful it's wine at this point. I was pretty, I was pretty sold. I'm not, I'm not so sold anymore with the, the zombies. Okay, and we move on to Langdon. Look at these, uh, look at these wine arrows with their <laughs> wine colored glowing eyes. I know what they're looking for. They're looking for that, that, they're looking for that sweet, that sweet juice. Um, aren't we all? I came down here, I abandoned uh, all of the heights of civilization once again for the lowly slums of the, um, of the dungeon and the cave. Uh, and sometimes it's kind of nice to get down there, get muddy, get dirty. Um, sometimes you got to squish your body into a, a giant clam in order to get warm. Uh, you got to do what you got to do to survive. And here we are, one last chance to do what you got to do to survive. I um, guess we'll take out these, uh, these wino zombies and uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, skull fuck Grizz a little um, before we sit down for a nice drink with Baron again. Okay, and Jerry, bring us home here. Uh, I knew we should have uh, stayed up on those outcrops. I would have rather taken on a handful of pathetic goblins than uh, whatever the heck is going on down here. I had a bad feeling about it when I was dangling. I thought they were all looking at me. And now that we're down here, uh, I don't even know what's going on. But um, I'm certain they're not friendly. And I'm certain they're not winos. Um, <laughs> and I don't know. Uh, I just wish we were back up by the elevator having mess, mess gone this far. We should have seen if we could have gone back. Okay. Um, as Jerry Shaker's paw uh, rise violently at his waist, the somnim somnambulant dead rise with a thirst for somnium burning in their eyes. Um, the goblins squeal in delight, yelling uh, derogatory phrases regarding their leader, Skullfucker Grizz, and the group is in desperate straits. And we'll see everybody next week. And